This is a 59-year-old male patient who presented with uh, significant abdominal pain on set of the pain six hours before the CT scan associated with uh, ongoing significant vomiting. The abdomen was generally tender and tense. X-rays showed dilated bowel loops, no previous abdominal surgery, and CT scan was performed to rule out bowel obstruction. Here are the images. I will go straight forward to the findings. There is some reactive free fluid in the abdomen and in the lower abdomen as well. And what we can see here is dilated small bowel loops. I will remind you that uh, when we search for bowel obstruction, we must check the large bowel starting from the anorectal region very carefully to see if there is any uh, mural pathology, any tumor. Okay, we follow the sigmoid colon here. Here, just follow my arrow. Here is the sigmoid goes. Here we can see a unusual stretching of the sigmoid. Just keep it in mind. We will discuss it for, for this finding a little later to explain the rest of the findings. And after this, the sigmoid colon uh, is stretched again. Not stretched. Uh, uh, after this point is collapsed, there is no dilatation. Okay, here is the descending colon. Okay, it goes very nicely centrally. This is the transverse colon, all this. The transverse colon. The right colonic curvature. And the right colon, the sacrum, the ileocecal valve. Normal. This small structure is the appendix as well. Here. So as you can see, the terminal ileum is not dilated. Here are the loops of the terminal ileum. All these are the loops of the terminal ileum. However, we can see that there is dilatation of the distal part of the ileum with some air fluid levels here and there. As we can see, the the stomach shows no dilatation and uh, the duodenum and the jejunum show normal caliper, no dilatation, probably due to excessive vomiting. Now the next uh, uh, part of our investigation is to see where is the obstruction, where exactly is the transitional, the stenotic point. And this is uh, sometimes challenging for the radiologist. Please uh, stay with me to show you something very interesting. I will show you that there, are, there is not only one stenotic point, there are two separate, two different stenotic transitional points. I will not take your time, but anyway, I followed and tracked the um, small bowel and I found two stenotic and abrupt uh, transitional points. The one is here, in this arrow. As you can see, the dilated small bowel loop 
ends up here. There is no continuation. You see? There is no continuation. We will see it in coronal views and in sagittal views as well. Here, on the other side, you see here a dilated small bowel ends up here with a second stenotic point. There is no continuation. There is abrupt stenosis. Let's see in coronal views now. It's very interesting. Here is the dilated loop and end, uh, ends up in this abrupt stenosis. This is the one stenotic point. Now pay attention in the, to this so a small bowel loop. It is dilated and let's follow it this direction. This direction there is also another stenotic point here. What else? We can see the mesenteric vessels which show abnormal appearance. There is a stretching of the mesenteric vessels which show confluence. And there is some fat blurring, some fat stranding. So again, we have a, a free of pathology. Uh, uh, we don't see any pathological findings in the large bowel. We can see a partially dilated small bowel, encapsulation of distended bowel loops. I would say that there is crowding of the dilated bowel loops and evidence of obstruction, stasis. Um, in addition, the two transitional points can lead to the conclusion that this is an internal hernia. Now, let's go back to the stretched sigmoid colon, descending and sigmoid colon. Let's follow it. Here it is, goes down down, down, and suddenly there is a stenosis and stretching at this point. And somewhere here we can see the transitional point, the stenotic point of the small bowel. Let's see again the large bowel. Just follow my, my arrow here. In between uh, the two dilated small bowels and here, here regains again and goes downwards distally to the anorectal region okay so, uh, our first conclusion is that there is, of course, small bowel obstruction. We have two different stenotic points. We all agree that uh, this is typical for an internal hernia, but of course there are several types of internal hernias, and uh, given the appearances of the um, of the stretched sigmoid colon, probably this is a type of transmesenteric uh, hernia, probably through a defect in the sigmoid mesocolon. I would like to show you in a sagittal views. This is the first transitional point. There is no continuation, as you can see, of this small bowel loop. And this is the other transitional point, the stenotic point. 
and at this point this is the stretched sigmoid colon dear friends thank you for watching if you like my videos you can subscribe to my channel so you will be notified when I will post my next interesting case in radiology. Thank you for your support.